and hello everyone so back with me again on second video which will be covering on subtopic 1.2 which is about paradigms of programming language okay are you guys ready so let's go uh-huh so can you all see this is all the burgers menu in mcdonald's oh sedapnya telion Kenapa tak asal burger buat ni? Tiba-tiba apa kaitan dengan paradigm? What is the relationship between the paradigms? So, you can see here, there is a lot of burgers, right? And all of them is delicious, definitely. And you can see, there are thousands of ways that we can do burgers. And the concept is similar. Okay? Concept of creating burger, there is a bun, up and uh, atas bawah, and then tengah tu akan ada feeling dia. Okay, then semua ni, okay, all of these are different styles of creating a burger, right? So, at the end of the day, all of this yang you nampak ni, semuanya kita panggil burger. So, these styles or concept of creating different kind of burgers, we can relate to paradigm itself. So, what does paradigm ni? Apa maksud paradigm? So, paradigm, literal meaning dia adalah bermaksud uh, typical pattern, okay, a pattern or a way to solve problems, okay. So, paradigm in this context, in this uh, programming, in our context of uh, programming language here, we call it a way in which the computer looks at the problem, uh, the way that the computer looks on how to solve the problem. If you notice, okay, Gambar yang nampak ada banyak tulisan ni, ini adalah gambar yang sama. Saya tunjuk waktu dalam video yang sebelum ni kan, video daripada subtopik 1.1. So, what, are, what, what is all of this? These are all the examples of programming language that has existed out here, out there. Okay? And lagi besar tulisan tu, maksudnya lagi commonly being used in nowadays. Uh, scenario. Okay, you can see there are C++, C, Java, Perl, Python and we were gonna be using Java programming throughout our whole semester. Have you ever thought how many programming language existed out there? Berapa sebenarnya? Berapa banyak programming language yang ada ni? Okay, menurut satu sumber yang saya percayalah okay, ada link dia tu saya dah letak Okay, dikatakan ada dalam 8,900, there are 8,900 programming language existed. However, there is only around less than 250 languages that are being commonly used. So, the one that I've showed you dalam figure ni, ni adalah semua programming language yang kita biasa guna. Okay, so, you dah tahu paradigm tu apa? Programming paradigm. So, programming paradigm is a way or a style of the computer to solve problem using programming language. Simple, okay? So, paradigm is a style, is a way of to solve problem. Programming paradigm is a way of solving problem using programming language. There are three types of paradigms yang kita akan cover throughout our syllabus, which is going to be procedural, Object oriented and logic. Okay. Ha, tengok, kita tengok dulu one by one. So, we first look at procedural. So, procedural means that the program is broken down into small parts called functions. So, maksudnya kita dalam satu program besar, you akan nampak dalam satu program tu, akan ada banyak part-part kecil-kecil kita panggil function. Function ni maksudnya, Uh, perbuatan lah apa aktiviti yang dibuat. buat okay, nampak tak saya ada lah tambah satu lagi words dekat situ imperative programming and don't worry, apa benda tu jangan risau, saya akan cover ke kejap lagi, ok tapi tak apa, you at least sekarang ni, you tahu oh, imperative programming ok, so ini contoh gambar, ok, contoh gambar procedural programming so, in one program gonna be a lot of functions. So, each function ni ada dia punya criteria dia tersendiri. So, let's say, okay, kita pakai contoh burger tadi lah kan. Okay? Senang. 
So you nak create satu game application buat burger. So you ada satu program ni kan. So you tahu bila nak buat burger kita kena uh, satu function kita ada satu kerja-kerja uh, yang kena buat nak buat burger ni adalah kita nak sediakan roti. Kita nak pilih salad. Kita nak pilih um, dia punya daging ke ayam. So pilih roti tu kita jadi satu function yang pertama. Function kedua Uh, pilih salad. Function ketiga pilih daging ataupun ayam. Uh, tu kita panggil eh, function-function ni. Okay, itu procedural. Object oriented pula. Apa dia? So, project oriented. Uh, sorry, project pula. Object oriented. Project. Hmm. Object oriented. Nama dia sendiri. Object. Oriented. Dia maksudnya dia berpaksikan dia menggunakan objek. So, the program is divided into small parts called project ataupun entity. So, back kepada procedural tadi. Procedural, the program broken down into functions. Okay, ingat procedural comes from the word procedures. So, it can be functions ataupun routine, subroutines. Okay, object oriented. The program is divided into small parts called entity ataupun objek. Ah, Again, dia ada ayat yang sama kan? You nampak tu. Imperative programming. If you notice kat sini, ha, nampak? Procedural dengan object oriented ni dalam color yang sama. Tapi tiba-tiba contoh -tiba, logic ni, color berbeza. Ada maksud dia. Nanti saya akan go through. Okay? So, ini contoh object oriented programming. So, right now, you boleh nampak setiap objek, setiap entity akan ada data dengan function. So, tadi procedurals dia hanya ada function saja. Tapi kali ni dalam object oriented dia ada data. Data ni you all tahu kan? Dia adalah information. So, let's say kita pakai example yang sama tadi. Kita nak buat game application burger. So, daripada kita ada function-function yang sediakan roti, sediakan uh, salad, sediakan daging atau ayam. Kita create dua. Kita create objek yang berkait dalam game burger tu. So, let's say kita nak masukkan seorang chef dengan seorang lagi assistant chef. So, dua orang, dua objek, dua entity. So, setiap objek ni, dia akan ada data. So, let's say chef ni, data dia, umur dia berapa, apa semua kan. Ha, dia tinggal di mana, apa semua. Dan function chef ni adalah dia pilih menu, apa yang akan keluar. Okay, dia sediakan menu untuk um, apa yang akan, maksudnya dalam game nanti kan, chef tu kerja dia, dia sediakan berapa target burger kita nak jual or whatsoever. Tapi, untuk assistant chef pula, okay, data dia, uh, macam biasa lah information kan, it can be your age or whatever. Okay, and then function dia, kita ambil function-function yang kita create tadi dalam procedure which is, uh, dia akan buat kerja-kerja renyah tu biasalah kan, assistant. Uh, so, dia akan sediakan roti, sediakan salad, sediakan daging apa semua tu. Ha, so, maksudnya kat sini, okay, object oriented, dia focus on object. Dia based on object. And setiap object tu akan ada data. Dan also function. And they all work around together. Okay? So, these two procedural and object oriented, both of these dalam satu kategori yang sama kita panggil imperative programming. They are all in one same categories which we call it imperative programming. Okay. And let's look at logic. So, what is logic? So, logic, the program is broken down into logical unit rather than functional unit. So, it is considered, it is a category of declarative programming. So, nak kata kat sini, logic ni, dia dalam kategori yang sangat berbeza dengan prosedur dengan object oriented. Apa maksud logical units ni? Okay, kita tengok gambar. So, let's say you have a question and then you give the question to the machine or to the system. So, the system or the machine will communicate, will find the answers based on the knowledge. So, contoh. Kita buat game application, um, game, tadi kan application burger. Kita just kata, okay, saya nak um, beef burger satu. That's all. And then, The way you nak susun burger tu semua tu, kita tak specify. Machine tu yang akan specify based on what dia dah belajar. Okay? Dia lebih kurang macam tu lah. Okay? So, logic ni, the program is broken down into logical unit rather than functional unit. 
So functional unit ni tadi, procedural dengan object oriented dia ada functional unit. So it's a step tu ada function. Tapi dalam nah, logic kita tak kisah pasal function function tu tak dok. Kita just fikirkan logic, logic akal dia. Ah logic akal dia maksudnya kita nak benda ni. Apa kau nak buat nak sediakan tu terpulang. It's up to the machine or system. Janji I get the final answer. I get the final product. That is all on logic. Okay. So tadi ingat tak tadi? Ada imperative dengan declarative. Okay. So, so let us understand first the difference between imperative and declarative programming. What does these two uh, categories mean? So let's say, imagine you walk into your favorite coffee place. Obviously Starbucks. Yes, Starbucks for life, whatever. <laughs> okay. And then you would like to order one ice latte or one sauce, any coffee. So, imperative, imperative programming ni, dia akan, uh, imperative tu which is procedural dan object oriented lah, okay? Dia akan bagi tahu, okay, instruction dia enter coffee shop, queue, and then um, order some order the drinks that you want, and then you want to take away or what? Yes, and then after then you pay, and after you pay you take order and walk away. We clarify. Steps by steps, each, fun each function to apa dia. However, untuk declarative ataupun logic, okay, we just order one ice latte takeaway, please. That's it. So, rather than providing a step by step instruction, which is imperative tadi, we, ataupun you tell the system what you need and let the system try to come up with its own solution. So, that is what we call declarative. Uh, so, maksudnya, tadi, imperative, step by step, kita tolong, uh, manja sikit lah, dia manja. Okay? Tapi, logic ni, dia berdikari. Uh, you hanya bagi tahu you nak apa, what I have to take away, please. And then, you, dia punya sistem kedai tu terus buat apa benda. Tak perlu cakap apa-apa, bayar apa semua, dia dah buat. Faham tak? Okay? So, that is the general uh, difference lah between Imperative dengan declarative and also procedural object oriented and logic. Okay. This is all in your lecture note. Okay, baca je. Okay, procedural ni maksud dia top down, maksud dia baca daripada atas sampai bawah. So, program tu kita tulis daripada atas sampai bawah. So, komputer tu akan baca daripada atas sampai bawah. Tapi untuk object oriented, okay, kita buat line of coding kita kan daripada Dah line 1 sampai habis sampai daripada atas sampai bawah Tapi Komputer tu dia akan baca dari bawah ke atas That's why we call it Bottom up approach Okay And then logic tu Tak adalah Dia memang dua Dia sangat kategori yang berbeza Compared to these two Alright So three language paradigm Advantage and disadvantage So procedural Okay, disebabkan dia ada procedures one by one, so it's well organized and it is well structured. But sometimes, it can be difficult to understand and difficult to change. It's not flexible. Okay, however, into object-oriented, for object-oriented, this is the most commonly used, uh, the style that commonly used in programming language. So, object-oriented. And we were going to use Java language and that Java language that we're going to use is using object-oriented paradigm. So, why? Because it have good structure, you are able to communicate and however, this object-oriented paradigm is not suitable for any complex algorithmic problem. Okay? And then last but not least is logic. So, logic is definitely easy to understand by us. Every fact that we have, we represent it only once. However, it is very difficult because we don't know what is the procedure and it is not well organized. Okay? Okay, dah habis dah language paradigm. Kejap, kejap. Kenapa? Why we should care about this topic? Why we should know all of this? Kenapa kena belajar sama paradigm ni kan? Ha, kenapa? Kenapa? Mesti muka korang pun macam tu kan? Why? Why? Why though? The short answer is general knowledge. And the long answer, I feel it. Uh, it is interesting that we are able to know and understand that many there are many ways in which programming can be 
done. And exploring this kind of topics, macam hari ni, kita dah cover language paradigm, is good. It's a good way of opening your mind and help you think outside of the box and outside of the tools that you already know. So, maksudnya kat sini, okay, pentingnya dan bagusnya kita didedahkan dengan knowledge berkaitan dengan paradigm ni adalah supaya kita lebih faham. Oh, nak buat program ini ada, cara-cara ada style dia. Ha, macam burger kan? Nak buat burger, ada banyak dia punya style dia. Okay?